Section 15 of The Great Chicago Fire by Various Authors Report of the Chicago Relief and Aid Society, Part 6 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Sick, Sanitary, and Hospital Measures The Committee on Sick, Sanitary, and Hospital Measures is composed of men representing fairly the medical profession of the city. Dr. H. A. Johnson is the chairman. Provisions for medical relief have been made as follows. Visitation The city has been divided into districts and sub-districts, with the same boundaries and the same offices as those of the superintendents of distribution. To each of these divisions a medical superintendent and a sufficient number of visiting physicians have been appointed. Their duties are defined as follows. First, each visiting physician will establish an office in connection with the depot of distribution in his district. Second, he will at a specified hour, morning and evening, visit the office and answer such calls as may be left by the superintendent of distribution, the visitors, and the medical superintendent of the district. Third, he will supply himself with a case and medicines for the use of those only who are the proper subjects of relief by this society. Fourth, he will affix to each prescription that he may send to the dispensing chemist his signature with a statement that this prescription is on account of the Chicago Relief and Aid Society. Fifth, he will especially examine into the sanitary condition of his district, the quantity and quality of food, clothing, dwellings, etc., and all matters having a bearing upon public or private health. Sixth, he will report daily to the medical superintendent of his district the name, age, sex, and nativity of each patient, with the name of the disease, result of treatment, number of visits to each patient, and such other information as the medical superintendent may from time to time require. Seventh, each medical superintendent will have the immediate direction of the medical service and sanitary interest of his district, and will be held responsible for the faithful performance of this work. He will assign visiting physicians to sub-districts, and require of them daily reports of their work. These reports he will condense and present weekly to the committee. He will admit patients to hospital, and in cases of emergency, visit patients at their homes. The general superintendent has directed visitors to report all cases coming to their knowledge requiring medical attendance, and the person in charge of each office has such reports at all times in readiness for the medical officer of the district when he calls. All possible aid is given the medical officer of the district, and he is allowed free access to the office and books of the society at all times. Medical Dispensaries In addition to this provision for the visitation of the sick at their homes, dispensaries have been established at convenient points, where such patients as are able to apply in person for advice are treated, and where medicines are dispensed upon the prescriptions of any physician certifying that his services in the case are gratuitous. In the North Division of the city, there is now only one of these institutions. Another will be opened as soon as the need of it shall be evident. In the West Division there are three, and in the South Division two. Medicines are also dispensed, and outpatients treated at all of the hospitals. The physicians to these dispensaries are men of approved character and professional standing. Hospitals For the relief of such patients as cannot safely be treated in their homes or quarters, and who cannot apply at a dispensary, hospital accommodations have been provided. Fortunately, the principal hospitals of the city were in the unburned district. Arrangements have been made with all these institutions by which patients are received on account of this society, without charge for medical and surgical attendance, nursing and general care, the society furnishing only medicines, rations, and furniture for such relief patients as may be received on its account. These hospitals are as follows. 
the Providence Hospital, located just beyond the northern limits of the city, the Women's and Children's Hospital, formerly located on North State Street, but now temporarily at number 598 West Adams Street. This is mainly a lying-in hospital. The Chicago Eye and Ear Infirmary, under the care of Dr. E. L. Holmes before the fire on Pearson Street in the North Division, now at 579 West Adams Street. St. Luke's Hospital on Indiana Avenue between 14th and 16th Streets. The Scammon Hospital on Cottage Grove Avenue near 29th Street. The Mercy Hospital, corner of Calumet Avenue and 26th Street. And the County Hospital, Arnold Street near 18th Street. In addition to these accommodations, the committee are building a hospital in the Burnt District of the North Division. The plan is essentially that of the United States Army hospitals. Hospitals are also being constructed in connection with the barracks in the West and North Divisions of the city. Patients are admitted to hospitals upon the order of the medical officers of the Chicago Relief and Aid Society, the sanitary superintendent of the Board of Health, and the county physician. Supplies to hospitals and dispensaries are issued upon requisitions endorsed by the chief medical officer of the institution, and approved by the chairman of the Committee on Sick, Sanitary, and Hospital Measures. The dispensaries and hospitals report daily to the chairman of this committee the number of patients treated, number of deaths, number of recoveries, and, as often as required, the names of relief patients under treatment. With the daily reports from the visiting physicians and these reports from hospitals and dispensaries, the committee will be able to give at any time the name and address of every patient treated, and, at the close of their work, the result of the case. Burials Arrangements have been made with the county authorities, by which, at a small cost to the relief fund, all who may die while under the care of this department will be furnished a coffin and hearse to any of the cemeteries in the vicinity of the city. Orders for such burial are given by Dr. Jonathan H. Ranch of the Board of Health, Dr. B. C. Miller, County Physician, or Dr. H. A. Johnson. How to Obtain Medical Relief To obtain medical relief, it is only necessary to make application to some one of the superintendents of distribution, to a visitor of that bureau, or to a medical superintendent. The offices and office hours of the physicians of the society will be found in the directory at the end of this report. Sanitary Regulations and Condition The sanitary questions connected with houses and barracks have been carefully considered, and the suggestions of this committee have been adopted by the Committee on Shelter. The barracks are subject to a careful daily inspection by sanitary officers, and regulations best calculated to maintain health are rigidly enforced. The statistics thus far indicate that these quarters are probably more healthy than those occupied by the same class of tenants before the fire. Up to the present time, November 30th, only one death has occurred among a population of 5,000 in barracks. For the last four years, our city has experienced a singular immunity from smallpox. We can hope to maintain this only by the same measures hitherto used namely, vaccination and revaccination. This has been made compulsory in the barracks, and all of our citizens have been urgently advised to submit themselves to the same operation. The returns from hospitals, dispensaries, and visiting physicians show that, to the date of this report, about 5,000 patients have been cared for by the medical officers of this society. A circular has been prepared and issued, earnestly inviting the cooperation of our citizens in providing for the sick proper nourishment, delicacies, and such care as cannot be given by the physician. It is believed that material aid will thus be secured for the committee in the administration of medical relief. This department is indebted for valuable assistance to the Board of Health, and especially to the sanitary superintendent, 
who has given his personal attention to the sanitary arrangements and police of the houses and barracks. The medical force is made up of men prominent in the profession, and earnest and conscientious in the discharge of their duties and with the above provisions it is believed that help will be brought within the reach of all, and none will suffer for anything that humanity, guided by educated art, can do for them. End of section 15